Hi guys, welcome to today's painting. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. In this video, it is a full length and it can be found on my Patreon page and my Paint with Lovejoy page. So you're going to get real time narration and step by step guidance with this. If you would like to further support Paint with Lovejoy, please check out the various outlets. And for more in-depth courses, please check out Paint with Lovejoy. All right, guys, this is going to be a fun painting today. Perfect for my first time painters. So gather your supplies, make sure you take progress photos, and feel free to switch out colors if you prefer a different um, set of colors for the background or for the northern lights. So we're going to start with the large flat brush. We're going to start at the bottom of the canvas and work our way towards the top. And we're going to start with a light pink and we're starting with the white and adding a little bit of red to get to a light pink. And if your shade's a little bit different than mine, totally okay. Or if you want to switch out and use maybe light yellow or even a light orange, feel free to do that. Now we're going to fill in about, you know, the bottom two or three inches of your canvas with this color. And then we're going to go with a uh, blue next and kind of blend them a little bit and work our way till we get towards black towards the top for the night sky. I am painting on watercolor paper. That's why the edges are taped. Um, so if you're painting on watercolor paper or canvas, you can still follow the steps. So here you can see where I'm going into a medium blue and that is white with a little bit of blue added to it. And we're bringing that to about halfway through the canvas. And you can put a touch of water on your brush and do a little bit of blending where the two colors meet. Do not take this super fast. It's okay to kind of take your time and play with the blending. You can even go back to that shade of pink and blend in um, whatever you need to do. We are going to put trees down there, so don't worry about getting it perfect. And here you can see where I went in and grabbed the direct blue to kind of go a little bit on top of the medium blue and blend into it. And then we're going to do a blue um, and black mixture next and then black. So here's the blue and black mixture. Again, we're just kind of going from that light color, trying to fade all the way into the pure black at the top of the canvas. Now here, um, as you're doing your blending, you may notice that your darker colors above kind of uh, overpower the colors below it. That's okay. That's just part of you learning how to get comfortable with blending and learning what the colors do when you blend them together. And the darker colors do tend to overpower the lighter colors when you are mixing. And with practice, you will get more comfortable with how to kind of deal with that balance with blending. And if this is your first painting, just embrace it. And everything that you're learning right now, you will be taking into your next painting and it'll make a little bit more sense um, but the important thing is, is just to kind of have fun. So go back to any area that if you want, you can go back to your blue, you can go back to the light pink and do everything that you want to your background, to your night sky. Now, then you're going to take your progress photo, let it fully dry. And then we're going to move into doing the stars and the stars are a lot of fun. So we're using two brushes here. I'm on the middle flat brush and I'm putting some water on my plate and then adding white pigment to it. And you do want it to be pretty, pretty runny, pretty fluid. And we're going to um, grab the other brush and kind of use it just as basically like a drumstick, a place that we're going to hit the other brush on top of. And with that fluid water, you can see where it just kind of jumps off that little brush and lands as little stars on your canvas, little galaxy stars. So feel free. You can add a little bit more water to your mixture. Go back and tap, play with a few different angles. You can do this with yellow paint. You can do this with other colors if you want. If you've got some metallic paint at home, this would be kind of fun. But just kind of play with it. It creates a really cool effect and it's a really simple application. And this is usually the funnest part of the painting when I teach this as an in-person class. So enjoy and have fun making your uh, galaxy of stars. If you don't want to do this method, you can actually just use your pointy brush and just do a little dots of white for each star. So your call, how you want to make your galaxy. So there, uh, do let this fully dry. And then we're going to move into the Northern lights. We're doing, um, white 
and yellow, and then I'm going to add a touch of blue to make green. So you can actually do these northern lights. I'm going to repeat the same process. You can do this in any color that you want. I'm kind of going for a lime green and was just trying to work with the colors that I still had on my plate. If you have a container of lime green or a light pink or other colors that you want to do, um, feel free to just kind of play with that and make the colors that you want. And if it takes you a little bit to find that perfect color that you like, that's okay. You are learning as you mix each of your colors each time. So once you have your color of choice, I am using that pointy brush, starting kind of on the right hand side and just making almost like a snake line, a little wiggle line as it kind of um, draws itself across the canvas or as you draw it across the canvas. Then you're gonna grab a larger brush, kind of a flat brush helps, and we're gonna make this upward um, brush stroke, this upward movement from that line. And this is the, the, the dust or the particles of the northern lights kind of shooting up into the sky. Now you can go back and grab more of the pigment that you made and then place your brush there and then just do your upstroke. Um, if you applied that first line of paint pretty thick, just use what's kind of on there and do an upstroke. Um, this is just kind of fun, does not have to be perfect. Everybody's is gonna be a little bit different. And just kind of have fun with yours. Your snake lines for the Northern Lights can be a little bit different shape than mine. You can have as many or as few as you want on there. You can do all of them in the same color. You can do them in multiple colors like I'll do on the video. Um, this is your painting to just kind of have fun and make your own. Now here you're going to see, I just went in, was just kind of smoothing stuff off, but I am going to grab a little bit of white paint and do a few places on this Northern Light um, just to kind of give a little bit more definition, a little bit more variety um, in the shade and the color. So you can see where I'm just kind of put it, putting it sporadically, but doing the same mark making, that same upward brush stroke. Now, if you are finding that you're nervous or that your brush is shaky, remember to just breathe. Exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, and that will make your process a little bit easier. Be kind to yourself as you are painting, especially for my first time painters. The only way to fail at painting is to not paint at all. So the fact that you're going through this process, you are already successful. And painting's not about being perfect or photorealistic, but just kind of improving your skills and then taking what you learn from each painting into your next painting. So here we're gonna recreate that exact same process, but we're gonna use light pink. So again, you can do your color of choice, but our application is gonna be the same. So you kind of make your initial line, with the pointy brush and then with the flat brush, grabbing more paint of that same color and doing your upward brush strokes. I'll do this one more time in the top right corner uh, with some blue paint. So that way you can just kind of uh, see the variety of colors here. But again, make this your own. I'm proud of you guys for stepping out of your comfort zone and painting at home. This is something like I've stated many times, it gets better with practice. So again, grabbing, once you're done with that Northern Light, clean that brush, grab some white paint and kind of do the same thing that we did for that first Northern Light. Um, just put a few little random areas for some different colors. Then we're gonna grab some light blue and put our last little Northern light on there. And then we'll be moving to the bottom of the canvas and adding some mountains and tree lines. With any of my videos, take the parts that work for you. If you don't wanna paint something on your painting, you're more than welcome to skip that step. I try to do all my tutorials and videos as just mere references for you to follow but giving you permission to change and deviate from the path and have fun. It's a painting is a great place to trust your instincts. So again, if you're inclined, if your gut feelings going, Hey, let's add this, go ahead and add it. Painting is a safe place to learn to trust your instincts. So same thing on this one, grabbing a little bit of that white, doing a few little highlights. Once we have that base on there, 
You guys are doing a great job. And at any point, feel free to pause the video, take that progress video, progress photo. Um, you do not have to go at the pace of the video. Pause it as much as you need. And a tip from a prior student is they watch it all the way through, and then on the second time they paint along. So here we're using the pointy brush. We made a blue gray, and that was a gray white with a little bit of black to make our gray, and then adding a little bit of blue. And this is gonna be for our mountain. And a little bit of a note uh, as we move further along the video, I ended up covering up this mountain with my tree formation. So um, if you want your mountain to be a little bit more prevalent, you'll do probably less trees than I do in the video. So now taking that same color, just adding some more black, going a little bit darker for our second mountain. This one will be a little more prominent at the end of the video. Um, and just making that darker one appear a little bit closer than the mountain behind it. So another place, pause that video, take a progress photo. We're gonna move into black paint and pointy brush. We're gonna put our trees on here your call. You don't have to add the trees if you don't want to. You can add one tree, you can add five trees, you can do whatever you want to um, the silhouette landscape for yours. So with this one, I'm basically doing the tree trunks first, putting little lines in there, and then we're going to add the foliage starting at the top and working our way towards the bottom of the tree trunks. Again, add as many or as few trees as you want in your painting. So when you're adding your foliage, I like to start at the top and almost kind of make a little triangle, a little point, and then imagine that as we go down the tree trunk, um, the branches get wider and longer and filling up that space. And literally all I'm doing, I am using that middle flat brush. I'm holding that brush kind of perpendicular to the canvas and literally just kind of tapping it on there. It creates a very nice texture and it's a good way to kind of quickly approach foliage, not have to do every single branch, every single leaf on the tree. But when we look at this from a distance, you go, oh, yep, that's a forest line. Those are trees. So a lot of things in painting are relatively simple. Uh, we don't need to overcomplicate them. And as humans, we do tend to do that. All right, doing a great job. A lot of people like this application for the trees. Just again, it's kind of stress relieving when I teach it in class. A lot of times I just say, you know, you're almost like stabbing the uh, canvas with your brush. So take out any frustrations as you're doing this method. And then we'll kind of repeat that same process on the right hand side. And then I'll go in with a few colors that I used for the Northern Lights and do the same thing, um, adding a few highlights on the trees. So these are smaller trees, a little further in the distance compared to the ones right up front. Same concept, you just draw your center trunk line and then add your foliage kind of stretching from there. Again, this does not have to be perfect. And for my first time painters, I'm really proud of you for painting at home, for just going through the process. Be kind to yourself. Try not to judge your final painting too much. And don't wait too long to do your next one. Because like I said, you just keep building your skills. So when you are done with your trees, kind of take a look at them. I do recommend that you look at it from a distance of five to ten feet away. Kind of assess, go, what do I need? Does it need something else? And then go back and add that. And here I grabbed a little bit of the yellow, uh, the yellow and blue mixture from the Northern Lights and just putting a few little dots on there, almost as if some of that light is reflecting onto the trees. This is completely optional. You can leave your tree line um, just with the black silhouettes or you can continue adding um, some of the highlights that I'm doing here. But again, I'm proud of you for painting. Please keep going. Please take notice that while you painted this, you may, be, you may have been focused on this painting, but you were not thinking about other things in your life. And that is one of the biggest benefits in the process of painting. So 
Try to find regular outlets for yourself to do this. Just be kind and get lost in the process of painting. Until next time, cheers. Thank you.